Turn now to the rising costs at the supermarket. Bill Limpert is the expert here for us, though. He's the editor of the Supermarket Guru. He's helping us out this morning with some smart swaps to survive the price surge. Good morning to you. And tell us first about this potato shortage a lot of people have been hearing about. And well, TJ, it's all about climate change. If we look at what's going on with the potato crops, this is throughout the entire world. We have less yields than ever before. And what that means for us Americans, we consume about 30 pounds of French fries every year. Um, so the bottom line is it hasn't hit the U.S. yet. Uh, we are seeing it in Asia. We're seeing it in Africa. Uh, but there are going to be shortages when it comes to those French fries. From NBC News. We're going to pay more for everything because of the grains that feed the cows, uh, the packaging where we put the soda in. I mean, just about everything is going through the roof. Tonight, the historic surge in the prices you're paying for just about everything. Without major transformation of everything to do in food, farms, retailers, food companies, we're going to see shortages and price increases for the next 12 to 18 months. The best advice that I can give is, number one, don't panic and don't hoard. Um, that just exacerbates the whole problem. Number two is this is going to be a reality for us. Um, do we really need, you know, 10 varieties of ketchup on the, on the shelves? This is going to be a wake-up call to manufacturers and to consumers alike. You said something in an interview which, which got my attention. You said that grocery stores have turned into battlefields during this pandemic. It's a little jarring to hear, but help explain what you're talking about there. Sure. Well, Christy, you know, just imagine when you go into a supermarket, you're seeing empty shelves. Uh, you're having maybe one of the store uh, associates coming up to you say, please wear a mask. Uh, we see other retailers now putting in security agents uh, like Hy-Vee in the Midwest um, in all their eight states. They're hiring security people. Um, and the bottom line is going shopping used to be fun. Walking up and down the aisles, you know, seeing your neighbors, having all those aromas and colors. Uh, not so much anymore. Grocery stores have been dealing with supply chain related problems throughout the pandemic. This is year three. So other than spreading out the milk, what else have they learned about dealing with this ongoing problem? So what we need to do is we need to build instead of one million square foot factories in the middle of the country for meat processing, we mm. need to dot them throughout the country, smaller 50,000, 100,000 foot factories, so that there's only an hour or two of trucking that's required. So we need to do that, but it's going to take billions of dollars and it's going to take time. So for us as shoppers, we've got to be smart. We've got to shop around. And also what we noticed during the pandemic is a lot of the small independent grocers where they had local relationships with meatpacking facilities or other companies, they had full shelves. So look around to those independent grocers as well. This is Good Morning America. Store brands are typically 20 to 30 percent less than the national brands. And these days, the quality are just as good. Phil, what are some of the major items grocery stores are finding it difficult to restock? To be honest with you, that's milk, butter, eggs, um, obviously beef, pork, chicken. Any of those products are really going to be the most difficult, and we're going to see the highest price increases. And again, that goes back to the feed. Um, it goes back to the fact that, you know, corn and soy have been destroyed. And also, frankly, as we've reopened our trade with China, the Chinese are paying more for corn and soy than the U.S. farmers. So that's creating a shortage for us as well. Joining us via Zoom is supermarket guru Phil Lempert. Phil, why is our meat supply in trouble? Now, so far, 18 North American meat production facilities, which represents over 12% of the total production capacity, have closed or reduced production capacity due to employee illness or employees just not showing up for work because they're afraid. And on top of this, Oz, the funniest thing is meat department sales have increased 43% since the pandemic began. So we're buying more meat and there's gonna be less meat there.